This, as you may already know, is the Keytron K8. And this is a custom keyboard that I built and programmed from scratch. Now in my last video, I applied some keyboard mods on my K8 to make those creamy ASMR thought. Have a quick listen. Nice. But ever since then, I had only one question in mind. Can I make the world's smallest custom keyboard? Whoops! That's the script for the next video. Bruh. <clears throat> okay, here's the correct script. Is it possible to make a custom keyboard where we design and build the circuit as well as program the keyboard from scratch? And the answer is yes! So in this video, we'll be building and programming a functional custom keyboard and review some of the struggles that I had to go through to get this damn thing working. Let's get started! At a high level, we need the following components for our keyboard. First, and the most obvious being the keyboard switches for each individual keys, whether it be mechanical, membrane, whatever this is, push button, etc. Now, these switches will be connected to the microcontroller, often referred to as System on Chip or SOC, which will detect the key presses and handle USB communication to the computer. Essentially, the microcontroller is the brain of our keyboard and you'll find these things everywhere like in cars, phones, game controllers, and even in your mom's late night toys. However, as it is now, the microcontroller has no firmware programmed onto it and basically the brain is empty. <laughs> That's what my dad always used to tell me growing up. EMOTIONAL damn it! So, we need to write and program the firmware onto the microcontroller, which provides instructions on how it needs to behave with all the inputs and outputs of our keyboard, in all possible scenarios. Essentially, think of the firmware as your stereotypical Asian parents dictating every aspect of your life. Guys, I think I have some personal issues that needs to be sorted out. Because, because I was raised by Asian parents. <laughs> my dad's not even the worst, my mom's much worse. Anyway... The last piece we need is the PCB, also known as a printed circuit board, which provides all the necessary connections between each component and basically glues all the components together. However, for this video, I decided to use a protoboard instead of a custom PCB to speed things up since it can take over two weeks to have the PCB manufactured and shipped to Canada. It'll make all the same necessary connections as a PCB would, but it'll just be messier. But do subscribe with notification since we'll be making a custom keyboard PCB in the next video. You can find all the source code and design files on my GitHub, just-kim, and I'll leave a link down in the description. First up is building the circuit with keyboard switches. For this video, we'll keep it simple and use one of the most commonly used switches in electronics, the push button. These buttons are the bread and butter for electronic hobbyists, and you may have seen them already on various circuits. Yes, I know. They don't have the creamy thought. Like mechanical keyboard switches. But they're more than adequate to teach us how to make a custom keyboard. Now, let's study a little bit on how the circuit actually works. For our keyboard, we'll take a look at a simplified numpad circuit with digits ranging from 1 to 9. The most commonly found circuit in keyboards is the key matrix, where it consists of outputs and inputs. In our numpad example, we have three columns of outputs and three rows of inputs, and therefore a 3x3 three three matrix. Once a switch is pushed by the user, it closes the connection and connects one of the outputs to one of the inputs. In this example, we're pressing the button associated with number 6. We can see that output 3 is now connected to input 2, and the microcontroller is able to detect that number 6, or rather, column 3 and row 2, is pressed. After that, we have a successful key press and the digit 6 is typed on our computer. For those of you experienced with keyboard circuits, you know that our current matrix has an issue with ghosting and masking. For those of you unfamiliar with these issues, just know that when multiple buttons are pressed at the same time, the microcontroller will have a difficult time knowing which key was actually pressed, and these two issues can be resolved with a simple addition of diodes connected to the switches. Diodes. 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 <laughs> I didn't add the diodes to the matrix for this video since it's good enough to teach us about building keyboard circuits, but I'll make sure to add the diodes for our next video. The second component needed in our custom keyboard is the microcontroller, and I'll be referring to them as micro for the rest of the video. Just like your penis. In order to get with the times, I was going to ask ChatGPT what a micro is and make some jokes about it. Unfortunately, when I tried to log in, the site was overloaded by multiple users and was at full capacity. Just like your mom. For those of you unfamiliar with these little guys, imagine an entire processor, plus general pins for inputs and outputs, plus bunch of analog sensor readers, plus various digital communication circuit blocks. Okay, I need to take a 
I need to take a break. Give me a second. Whew! plus a whole bunch of other things and put them together in a single chip package and what you end up with is a huge pain in the ass. Take a look at this Micros datasheet which is over 400 pages long. This entire documentation is for this one single chip. Do you have the patience and focus to read this entire thing? I mentioned this is the brain of our custom keyboard and the brain of course needs to be connected to the rest of the body parts. Or does it? Yeah, yeah it does. Let's take a closer look at our custom keyboard schematic and try to understand what's going on for each circuit component. So here we have the micro, the brain of our keyboard, connected to the numpad matrix that we built for typing numbers 1 to 9. The micro is also wired to the USB connector, which of course connects to our PC. There's a second connector for our micro, which we need for programming the initial bootloader firmware. Let's take a closer look at how the matrix circuit is connected to our micro. Recalling that our matrix has 3 outputs and 3 inputs, a total of 6 pins from the micro needs to be connected to the matrix circuit. You may be asking, how does the micro know which pins are output? outputs and which pins are inputs? Well, through the magic of software. There are also other components connected to our micro and other minor details that we won't worry for now. For those of you familiar with Arduinos, you're probably thinking, JK, why didn't you just use an Arduino Leo or the Micro Pro for your project, where everything already comes soldered and pre-assembled? Let's just say I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Real dirty, if you get my drift. The last component we'll discuss for a custom keyboard is the firmware on the micro. For this project, I've chosen to use the Arduino platform, and as mentioned previously, the Arduino Leonardo is implemented on our keyboard. No shame by the way if you use Arduino with its bootloader instead of directly programming the micros with C and C++. If you want something done fast on a reliable electronics platform, Arduino is definitely the way to go. Looking at the files of the firmware code, we see that we have the main start of the program under the name Tiny Keys, which also is the name of the entire project. This is where the keyboard tasks are complete it in a continuous loop in a periodic fashion, in our case, every one millisecond. Same amount of time you would last in bed if you had a girlfriend. Then we have the custom keyboard library, which is written to handle all keyboard related tasks for any types of keyboard. So these would include detecting key presses and releases. It's structured into a class with various variables and functions. And if you're unfamiliar with coding, just think of a class as a blueprint or a template of a larger system where it helps organize how the code is structured. But if you are familiar with Arduino and C++, here's a joke for you. Why did the C++ class go on a trip to the zoo? To see the polymorphism in action! You need to leave. And finally, we have the testpad keyboard profile, which contains all the necessary information about the matrix circuit details. So these would include the total number of rows and columns on the matrix circuit, and the GPIO pin numbers of the micro connected to the matrix. It also contains the details on what key characters are typed when each individual switches are pushed. Since I'm a lazy piece of sh I wrote the firmware in such a way that when you want to add a new keyboard layout, only a single file for the new keyboard profile needs to be written and added instead of rewriting the entire code base. For example, just like the numpad, if we wanted to design and add a 40% keyboard profile onto the firmware, we would only have to add a new file called key profile 40% and edit this file instead of rewriting the entire code base. And of course, if I want to change back to the numpad keyboard profile, I can quickly switch back by modifying a single line of code. Now, with all the circuits soldered and assembled, and after programming our micro with our firmware, we can connect our custom keyboard to our computer, and everything should work. Nice. And our custom keys aren't limited to just numbers, of course. We can reprogram each key to type any characters, including hashtag and F. Bruh. Bruh. With additional code, it can even type entire sentences. Check it out! Alright, check it out guys! Playing the OG of all games with their custom keyboard, the original DOS Prince of Persia. Bruh! I bought some Akko switches, specifically the sponge model, and soldered them on a protoboard to try them out with their new keyboard firmware. It works fairly well and sounds okay. Have a quick listen! But they are missing keycaps. Since I want to save some money, I'll check out what's available online and try to 3D print them myself. Okay, let's take a look on the internet to see if there are any freely available 3D models of the keycaps. Hmm, this stock one looks nice. Downloading now? Let's place a keycap model onto our 3D printer software and then copy and paste so that we have 9 of them. Let's slice it up into a file that our 3D printer can understand and watch the 3D printer print the models. And here we have some new and free keycaps for our ACO switches. Hmm, this gives me an idea. I wonder if we can shrink down this 3D model and make smaller keycaps for our push button switches and attempt to build the world's smallest keyboard. 